Hi everyone, welcome to Edipedia World. I am C.A. Radhika Sengal. Today we are going to start a new topic, Working Capital. This topic is really very important from examination point of view. Not only from practical aspect, but theory questions are also there. It's like there is like 20 to 25 marks weightage as per the past trend of the examination. So this topic is very scoring and needs obviously a lot of practice. So I'm going to cover all the theory points here while discussing on this chapter. It's not like that I've not covered in the previous lectures, but it's like those topics which are not important from the examination point of view. I really don't spend much time because I understand that as short or more the fast track my classes were, it's really beneficial for you because the more you can practice, the subject is more of your practice. I just focus on the concepts. So once you get in the concepts, it's all on your practice. Let's start with this topic, working capital. What does we mean by working capital? So working means in the daily operations of the business of the firm. So whatever resources which are required in the daily operations of the firm, the capital which is required to finance these resources is called as working capital. So the capital which is required to finance current assets is called as working capital of a company. So when I say current assets, it means it does not include the fixed assets of the company. And by current assets, we mean those assets which can be converted into cash in the current accounting period or you can say in the current operating cycle. Well, we are going to discuss what exactly operating cycle means later on. So you can say that working capital could be defined as all the short term assets which are used in daily operations of a company. And there are various types of working capital. Let's discuss one by one. First is initial working capital. As the name suggests, initial ca working capital is the working capital which is required at the commencement of the business. Now, when you commence a business, there are incorporation expenses, there are promotional expenses, which are, all are at the early stage of the business. If you print a memorandum or if you approve, there's a stamp duty charges, right? So these are the incorporation expenses. The capital which is required for such type of expenses is called as initial working capital. Clear? Next is regular working capital. As for the name, regular working capital in the daily operations of the firm. So this is that capital which remains always in the enterprise. It supplies the one necessary to meet the current working expenses. For example, for purchasing of the raw material, payment of the wages, salaries, sundry creditors. So the working capital required for the regular expenses of a company is called as regular working capital. Fluctuating working capital. So it also goes with, with its name. So it is the one which is used to meet the seasonal requirement of a business. For example, there's a milkman. What happened during the Diwali festival? The requirement and the inventory requirement increases. So he needs more of working capital during that moment. However, during the rest period of the time, like during the non-festive season, there is no such requirement. So fluctuating working capital represents the seasonal requirement of a business. The who say with the company, they have to increase the capacity of a production capacity during that festive season or during the seasonal requirement. So the capital which is required to finance the seasonal requirement of a business called as fluctuating working capital of a company. Next is reserve margin working capital. Reserve margin. Margin is to be maintained for maintain, meeting the contingency requirement. So reserve margin working capital is the amount which is utilized at the time of contingencies. Say a bearish period is going on, there is an inflation, or you can say there is a layoff of the unavoidable competition is going on. You can say earthquake, a natural disaster. What happens in circumstances? In such cases, a greater amount of capital is required for maintaining or the functioning of a business. Next is 
permanent and temporary working capital. Well, how the working capital requirement of a business arise? We can say that a company, let's say a manufacturing one, it purchases some raw material for that it needs cash. So cash is invested and is converted into a raw material. That raw material is converted into a finished goods and that those finished goods are sold to a customer. Now there may be a credit period. If there is a credit period, that customer is our debtor. So still we have not realized the cash. And after the credit period expires, the debtor pays you back the cash. So this is one operating cycle of a business. So in this operating cycle, once you realize your cash, whether it ends, no, it continues. That is how a business work. Hence, the need for the regular supply of working capital. However, the magnitude of working capital required is not constant and it's always fluctuating. But to carry on a business, there is a certain minimum level of working capital which is necessary. So, the minimum amount of working capital which is kept into the business for the regular function is called as permanent working capital. So, the temporary one is already clear. So, temporary is the to meet the seasonal or you can say the fluctuating requirement. Permanent working capital is which is always invested into the business. And temporary is to meet the seasonal requirements or you can say it is a variable working requirement. Next is long term working capital. So this is same as the permanent one. Long term working capital is used is, or you can say is the amount of funds which is required to be kept into the business in order to satisfy demand at its lowest point. Therefore, the value or you can say the amount which represents the long term working capital, it always stays within the business process at all the time. In other words, it consists of the minimum current assets to be maintained into the business at all times. The size of the working capital, it varies directly with the size and the ownership of the business. Vice versa is the short term working capital. The volume or you can say the operations of the business, it decides the quantum of the short term working capital. So it changes from one firm to another, from cash to inventory, from inventory to debtors and from debtors to cash. So it may always be gained fully employed. Temporary working capital should be obtained from such sources. And permanent working capital should be obtained from long term sources of working capital. The next is gross working capital. As the name suggests, gross total and working capital is the total amount of investment in current assets. So gross working capital is the total amount of current assets which is invested into the business. And net working capital is when you reduce the current liabilities of a firm from the current assets. So net working capital in short is the difference between current assets and current liabilities. So this could be positive or could be negative. Positive when current assets are more than current liabilities, which is a favorable situation for a company. And uh, negative means when current liabilities are more than current assets. So when it is a positive working capital, we could say that it is a difference or you can say the amount which is financed by the long term sources of finance. Right. So the cross working capital, it focuses attention on the two important aspects of current asset management. What are these two? One is how to optimize investment in current assets. This is a financial management decision. And the next question is how these current assets should be financed. So both these questions are very important action of the management. And the net working capital and gross working capital, these two have equal significance for a 
management point of view. Now let's discuss how this working capital is being determined. That is the determinants of working capital. Well, is there a one determinant? No. And moreover, if I have to evaluate that which determinant is more important and which factor is there, which which has a more significance over the quantum of working capital into the business, we cannot say because it varies from business to business and there are various factors which influence these decisions. So we are going to discuss some major factors which are helpful or you can say which determine the working capital requirement in a firm. The most common is nature of the business. So by nature of the business means whether it's a cash business or a credit business. Say if there's a cash business, one does not have to maintain inventory or does not have to maintain surplus. I produce the goods, I sell it, I get my cash back again. In a credit business, the operating cycle is quite long because you have to sell the raw material. Then there's a difference between from that raw material to be sold, that is from raw material to debtor and the actual time period between the realization of the cash from data to cash again. So back to cash. So the nature of the business also affects the quantum of the working capital to be kept into the business. Next point from nature of is like a manufacturing company or a trading company. The quantum of inventory in a manufacturing company will be much higher than a trading company. Right. Next is degree of seasonality. So this is very clear, a seasonal business. So inventory is maintained during the peak season, right? And during the other season, the company do not maintain such inventory. But it's a management call, whether they want to maintain a consistent approach, that is they pile up the inventory during off season and sold off that inventory during the peak season. So it also depends that what is the nature of the risk that the management is taking? And what type of inventory, whether they have a just-in-time inventory approach that is based on the requirement or they used to keep some reserve here for inventory. The other factor is production policies. By production policies, we mean that as I discussed, like the company keep a consistent stock or the company keeps a stock basis demand. So this also depends that how much working capital the company or you can say the how much working capital the com requirement does the company has. The other factor growth stage of business. So if the company is at a growth stage to expand the company has to keep some inventory in order to meet the competition. Moreover the company do not like to avoid any production interruptions and all that. How we cannot say because as the company is growing, there is more sophistication in the production. The company is opting for more or beneficial uh, options in order to reduce the working capital cost. So there is no such direct relationship. However, this also affects the amount of working capital into the business. Next is position of the business cycle. Now, what does that mean? To explain this, See what happened during a bearish period when there is a a very a company has a cash crunch going on. The economic condition of a country is also not going good. In such scenario, the company is not able in a position is not in a position to raise funds. Vice versa, if the company has a good cash reserve here or the economic condition of a country is very good. The company is able in a, is, is in a position to raise funds. So the economic conditions going on or the business situations going on also affect the working capital requirement of the business. Next, competitive conditions. Well, this is very important. For example, you are a new entrant into a business or you have a very tough competition with some XYZ limited. So what a customer will do? Go to the beneficial one. If XYZ Limited is offering, let's say, three months credit period, so you cannot sell on cash basis until unless you have such a good term or you have such a monopoly. Why a customer will invest into your business when 
for three months its assets is being financed by the supplier so it's also like the company always go with the industry trend also whatever the conditions that the competitors have kept those conditions are also be to be met by the business production collection time period so by production collection time period it means that the day how long is there the day you have invested cash into the business and you realize that cash back a company may do purchases on cash basis but it might have to sell the goods on credit it's not necessary that the company has purchased goods on cash and it also able to sell those goods on cash basis only and more about the gestation period between converting of those raw material into the finished goods so however long is that particular cycle like it if it is an industry which produces it took 180 days to convert it from raw material stage to finished goods stage so the production period is quite long we have invested the working capital in while purchasing of raw material and when you will realize it actually when you sold those finished goods but it also depends upon the credit policies of the business next is dividend policy dividend policy if you remember all these decisions are related right so a company will always while taking any dividend decision will consider that how much surplus the cash or you can say surplus cash the business has so a div- a cash requirement or a cash reserve in his business is never being ignored before taking any dividend policy decision size of the business very obvious a large business organization will always have more of a working capital and a small has a small size of the business or you can say a small business has a small requirement so it depends upon the scale and the nature of the industry it's a working capital or capital intensive industry or a labor intensive industry so all these are you can say a different factors to determine the working capital well these uh, this will never be an exhaustive list this is just the important factors there are many factors which the finance manager consider before deciding that how much amount of working capital is to be invested and before taking this decision this decision is very important because if you have surplus working capital into the business you can say there are idle funds there are pile up of inventory all these will ultimately increase the cost to the company and reducing the profit that's all for today that we are going to discuss in the next class we are going to further discuss few more topics regarding working capital have a nice day and keep smiling